to relate to each other. One great character of the Ramayana, which I'm sure everyone likes to know, and, and I promised one of our doctors uh, before the meeting to talk about, is Hanumanji. Hanumanji, how can we explain such a very complex character? How can it be that a structure in our body will become small, then become big, then send messages, then go through a small hole, then um, uh, burn the city, then uh, bring healing aspects and all of that? And if we look at it carefully, we find it is the hormonal system. All our endocrine system together is under the control of Hanumanji. And you know, the hormones are very tiny molecules, very tiny molecules, you can't even see them under the microscope, that travel everywhere in the body, that can penetrate through small holes that sit on receptors. They send messages, they are messengers actually, and therefore this is why, how it is a message. Yet, as a whole, as a group, they are huge. In a split second or a few seconds, if you have a secretion of hormones, a certain type of hormone in the body, your whole metabolism can be changed, your digestion can be changed, your immune system can be activated or deactivated. And when you look in the Ramayana and see how Hanumanji is described, you actually find that this is a physiological description of the entire hormonal system. I let you read how the Vanaras, which are the, the, the monkey-like aspects, are actually uh, guided, and their king, Vali, and Sugriva, and the relationship between them, and how they actually control the hormonal system. If we look at the uh, pituitary gland, which is called the master gland of the body, we find that the anterior pituitary gland is Sugriva, and the posterior pituitary gland is Vali. Angada is the son of Vali. There is a long story of how they interact to each other, how Vali goes into the cave, which is the Sela Tursika, a specific cave in our brain, actually existing in our brain and only Vali could go through it, so Griva had to wait on the door. And the whole story, in its very delicate intricacies, how Vali told him, I will send the milk if I kill the demon, if all of you, I don't know how many will remember that. And you see that this part of the, of the structure of the pituitary gland is related to milk secretion, how this part is related to other aspects that are described almost technically precisely in the Ramayana in word for word, as if you just change the words and the Ramayana becomes a, a physiological book, a book of neuroanatomy or <laughs> neurophysiology. It's just by translating the names from the ancient Vedic names to the modern names, you see an exact and precise description of what is taking place. And what is amazing also is that even if you go back into the stories, for example, Vali was said to have been born from the head of his father, Riksharaja, and Sugriva was born from the neck of his father, Riksharaja, and then they joined together and worked together. All those who know uh, embryology or remember some of thing of it, we know that, that the posterior pituitary gland actually comes from the neural tube, which is from the head. And the anterior pituitary gland, I mean in our body, in, in physical physiology, the pituitary gland comes from the top of the neck, from the palate, the anterior pituitary. And the, the anterior pituitary climbs and joins the posterior pituitary. So when it's said in the Vedic literature, in the Ramayana, that Riksharaja's head from his head came Vali, and from his palate or from his neck came Sugriva, is an actual precise description of how these structure actually developed, how they joined together. So these are just a few examples. The time doesn't allow us to go into it. Ramayana is so delightful, we could spend the whole night talking about Ramayana and certainly t seeing how it connects to our body. But that's the point of the evening today, is to give us an idea of how actually we are Veda, 
in a physical way how Ram is within us, Sita when is us, Hanuman, Ravana also somewhere, <laughs> and how they all interact and how the story of the Ramayana is the story of our own development and our growth in higher states of consciousness and how by actually achieving enlightenment and higher states of consciousness, we understand all the developments of the Ramayana taking place within us. This is the story of how creation is made, how life is made, how our body is made, how our society works, and how our universe works. This knowledge, which comes from direct experience, is perfect and complete knowledge. If we go back in history, what was the reference for action, the reference for thinking, for behaving? It was self-referral, pure knowledge. Today, modern science has given us a lot to improve our life. We have cars, we go to the moon, we fly fast, etc. But we always refer in our actions, in our politics, in creating our laws, in our decision-making, to our self-referral values within us. We refer to what we know best to do. And that is because our physiology is also an instrument of knowledge that when perfected and when awakened in all of its values, it can know everything, it can be everything, and it can live life in perfection. You have that knowledge. Your tradition, your ancestors, your parents have upheld that tradition for generations and generations. And today it's only because modern science had advanced enough that we can truly recognize the value of this knowledge. However, if I'm here for anything, is to share this with you and truly to have the opportunity to thank you and thank Veda Bhumi Bharat, Deva Bhumi Bharat, and the holy tradition of Vedic Master, and of course my teacher, uh, Maharshi Mahesh Yogi, for maintaining this knowledge and giving it to the world for the creation of a true Ramraj, heaven on earth everywhere. Jai Guru Jai.